Hello, welcome. Thank you for joining us on this edition of News 2. I'm Sandra Guman Singh in our top story. A day that is celebrated by many communities of the African diaspora was commemorated in the territory today. The day was erected to raise political awareness in African communities across the world on the struggles for liberation and self-determination. African Liberation Day was founded in Ghana in 1958 at the first conference of independent African states which attracted African leaders and political activists from various countries. Now today at the St. Thomas Legislature Building, students and legislatures honored African ancestors who were brought to the VI. Stephanie Brown reports. Members of the 32nd Legislature from the St. Thomas District hosted an African Liberation Day program spearheaded by the Senate President Myron Jackson. The program was largely comprised of young Virgin Islanders that gave performances honoring people of the African diaspora. We sing our music is the cuts that we beat through. Somewhere in the dream we had an epiphany. Now we write the wrongs in history. African Liberation Day is celebrated globally on March 25th of each year, and the day is used to showcase the determination of people of Africa to free themselves from foreign exploitation. Senator Marvin Blyden recognized the significance we are of the day. This day. I believe that it is important that our students, especially our young black males, realize and understand some of our traditions and our history. In 1989, Bill number 180147 proclaimed that the third week in May would be recognized as the Virgin Islands Liberation Week to pay homage to Africans that were forcibly brought to the Virgin Islands. Today is a day we are reminded from whence we came. And I am glad to see that we are starting and we have the involvement of our young individuals because they are the ones of the future. Senator Roach informed that he often engages in social media on race and human rights forums. Sometimes I go on the internet and I comment on some of these comments and I say, you know, it's not good to hate your mother. So it's not good to hate your mother. Everything about human civilization began in Africa. For News 2, I'm Stephanie Shalana Brown. Well, there were lots of entertainers there, and some of the performers at the program included the Queens of the Earth and the Wachanga drummers, the Ebani Dorkin High School dancers, and the Legends Choir, among others. Well, Senators uh, Trigenza Roach and Alicia Chucky Hansen, two members of the 32nd Legislature's Minority Caucus, they have joined in a bill which would dismantle the Virgin Islands Centennial Commission and use all unobliged funds, obligated funds, rather appropriated to that body to support youth programs to address dire needs of both the territory's public hospitals. The bill request was submitted to the legislature's legal counsel's office. It comes on the heels of notice of the commission's plans to take as many as 11 of its members and staff on a trip to Denmark to participate in a festival. Media reports of the trip indicate that the commission is prepared to spend up to $5,000 to support the travel requirements of each member and staff making that trip. Both Roach and Hansen say they question the need for any more financial support of the commission if this trip is any indication of its priorities. The body will still have at its disposal in excess of $1 million to fund the other centennial-related activities. Senator Roach, who on Tuesday requested of Senate President Marin Jackson that a hearing be called on the matter, said he does not believe that a timely response will come to address this urgent situation. Well, Governor Kenneth Mapp has announced that more than $4 million in tax refunds were mailed out on the Thursday morning. He said most of the refunds, 1,857, were for the 2015 tax year, with an additional 79 representing years prior. This follows the more than 1,800 checks that were sent out on May 11, 2017, valued at more than $3.8 million. Approximately 2,000 refund checks for 2015 were mailed out in April. 
He said, we continue to make progress in getting all these refunds out and hope this will brighten a few more faces as we prepare to honor those who gave the ultimate sacrifice over this holiday weekend. Governor Mapp said the Bureau of Internal Revenue plans to begin dispersing 2016 tax refunds by midsummer. The governor said an announcement will be made as the date approaches when more refunds could be paid. He said, we thank the community for their patience as we currently must manage our cash flow on a weekly basis. And he said, once again, I thank the employees of BIR and the Department of Finance for their efforts in getting these refunds processed. Taxpayers with questions about their tax returns or refunds may contact IRB at 340-715-1040. Well, Marvin Pickering, the director of the Virgin Islands Bureau of Internal Revenue, reminds the business community that pursuant to Title 33 of the Virgin Islands Code, Section 44, items imported into the territory via the United States Postal Service for sale or disposition in the course of a business are subject to excise taxes. The Bureau normally notifies taxpayers regarding the shipments received via the Postal Service and instructs them on how to make the payment. He said business owners are expected to file and pay the correct amount of excise tax due within 30 days following the month during which the item was imported. Failure to pay the excise tax that is owed will result in more aggressive collection efforts. Again, taxpayers with questions about excise taxes should contact Glenford Hodge or Gail Galloway at 340-715-1040. Senator at large Brian Smith has indicated that the sin taxes alone will not cure all of the government financial problems. He stated that the legislative and the executive branch of government will have to work very closely together to implement austerity measures to reduce the structural deficit. The executive branch, he said, will need to consider reducing duplication of executive positions in the government. The senator says he also believes that the exorbitant raises given to cabinet level employees will have to be rescinded. The days of excessive government spending has long gone. Leaders have to be responsible and make tough decisions regarding the spending practices of the executive branch. All taxpayers expect and deserve adequate government services. The government must stop taxing the same sources, he said, and start creating other sources of revenue. The Virgin Islands, he said, needs new hotel projects and new marina development. Well, in other news, Governor Kenneth Mapp, just a quick announcement, will be holding a press conference that's scheduled for 11 a.m. tomorrow at Government House in Thomas to address sports tourism developments. And be sure to tune in to News 2. We will have some details as well as highlights from that conference. Turning to the courts, Sequan Celestine, a 23-year-old resident of Anna's Retreat St. Thomas, was remanded to the Bureau of Corrections on Tuesday afternoon, minutes after a jury convicted him of shooting a woman and leaving her for dead. According to the VI Department of Justice, that verdict came after two days of testimony and more than three hours of deliberation. A VI Superior Court jury unanimously convicted Celestine of second-degree attempted murder, unauthorized use of a firearm during the commission of a second-degree attempted murder, first-degree assault, unauthorized use of a firearm during the commission of a first-degree assault, third-degree assault, among others, and that's in connection with the August 9, 2015 shooting of Andrew Andrea Gums. The incident occurred in the area of the Miskunt Roadway. VI Superior Court Judge Michael Dunstan had set, set June 14th as the date for Celestine's sentencing. Celestine has been convicted previously of a felony offense, is deemed a habitual criminal offender, and will be sentenced on the, under the Habitual Offender Act, the DOJ re news release said. Now, the prosecution relied on the testimony of eight witnesses, including the victim, to prove its case. Gums told jurors she was traveling inside a car with Celestine and two other men that day. She was sitting in the back seat of the vehicle with Celestine. At some point, Celestine demanded that Gums perform a sexual act on him but she refused. Shortly after, Celestine pointed a gun at Gum's face and shot her. The bullet entered her right eye and exited through the left side of her neck. Celestine and the two other men climbed back into the car and drove away from the area, leaving Gums in the street, according to the testimony. A passerby who was driving along the area saw Gums stumbling about the street. Her face was covered in blood. The man rushed her to her assistance, tried to stop the bleeding, 
with towels and called 911. Emergency dispatchers arrived on the scene and took Gums to the Schneider Regional Medical Center where she was treated for the life-threatening injury, according to the court testimony. testimony. Now, during an interview with police, Gums was able to identify her shooter through a six-picture photo array and Celestine was taken into custody. Uh, the incident occurred again in the Miss Guns Roadway and uh, June 14th is the date set for Celestine's sentencing. 24-year-old Spencer Allen, and here's an update, the man accused of burning federal property in February has to undergo a competency hearing, according to the courts. Police arrested Allen, you may remember, on February 28th after a string of three blazes, one at the Ron DeLugo Federal Building, the Sheldon Molly Coast Guard Center, and the Navy Recruiting Center office in Niski Center there. He has been charged with a single count of destruction of federal property by fire. On March 23rd, Allen wrote to U.S. Magistrate Judge Ruth Miller detailing his status as a Russian agent. On March 28, Miller ordered a psychiatric evaluation at a federal medical center after shared information of multiple suicide attempts. If the court finds that his competence cannot be restored, Allen could be released. Be sure to count on two. We will keep you updated. A federal appeals court upheld Thursday an injunction against President Donald Trump's travel ban against six Muslim-majority countries. The ruling upholds a lower court's decision to halt core portions of the executive order indefinitely. The new ban was announced in March, but never got off the ground because federal courts blocked it just hours before it was set to go into effect. It would have banned people from Iran, Libya, Somalia, Sudan, Syria, and Yemen from entering the United States for 90 days and all refugees for 120 days. Keeping our eye on the economy, solar continues to be the hot spot in today's job market. Solar jobs grew 17 times faster than the total U.S. economy last year. And that's according to an International Renewable Energy Agency report published on Wednesday. More than 260,000 people work in the solar industry. That's up by 24% from 2015. The report showed most solar workers are in the installation business. Other leading jobs include manufacturing, project development, sales and research and development. Well, in other news, raise a glass and make a toast to Wine Day. Today was National Wine Day and expect bars and restaurants everywhere to celebrate accordingly. It's not exactly clear who started the celebration of the ancient beverage, but wine consumption has risen steadily in the U.S. since the early 90s. According to the Wine Institute, Americans drink more than 900 gallons of it each year. Studies show that moderate wine consumption reduces the risk of heart attack and type 2 diabetes. It isn't all a bowl of cherries or grapes in the world of wine, though. Earlier this week, a new study linked even one glass a day to increase risk of breast cancer. And if it feels like you just celebrated National Wine Day, that was National Drink Wine Day, the sister holiday that was celebrated back in February. Let's take a look at the numbers there. The Dow up 70, NASDAQ 43, S&P 500 up 10. Coming up on News 2, we recognize National Public Works Week. Find out how uh, some are recognizing some of our public works um, employees. That's coming up. For some Caribbean news, administrators from the Dernice Revere combined a school program all in an effort to gain more parental involvement. Here's more. Administrators at the Dernier Revere Combined School have launched a program designed to get parents more involved in their children's education. Research shows that family engagement in schools improves student achievement, reduces absenteeism, and restores parents' confidence in their children's education. We learn more in this report. The Dernier Revere Combined School is placing emphasis on bridging the gap between the school and home environment through its community outreach program. The program launched recently is aimed at addressing some of the issues affecting students 
both socially and psychologically. Principal of the Denier Riviere Combined School, Martiniana Smith says, the program is extremely important as it allows for parents' involvement in the child's educational life. We looked at crime and criminality. We looked at decision making. We looked at sex and the law. We looked at how to report a crime. We looked at parents' role in the children's educational life. We looked at um, decision making. And um, we tried to speak to the parents in the best way that we, c we could because we want the school to make a difference in the community. We want to know that our children are living in a community that is safe. If you want to have a good community, you must have good programs in the school because the children at the school are the ones who will become the leaders in the community. You will become the parents of the community tomorrow. So I think you are in very good hands and it's not just the academics or what you do on your textbook that counts, but how your character is being shaped and the values that are being instilled in you. These are the things that will make for an even better community. We'll turn our attention back at home. No new cases of Zika to report. That's good news from the Department of Health. However, a Zika Action Day is coming up this Sunday, May 28, from 12 to 6 at the Ten Pins Bowling Center. It's a free event for the family. There will be face painting, a giant slide, an obstacle course, bounce castle, skits from Dora, Mickey, Minnie, SpongeBob, and Elmo's, free entry, free rides, and free entertainment. There will also be giveaways from Urban Thread, Strictly the Best, Navs Jewelry, and Den Jewelers. Now during Zika Action Day, the Department of Health provides free Zika prevention kits to pregnant women and Zika testing to anyone with Zika symptoms. The department will also give pregnant women the opportunity to sign up to receive free mosquito control services at their homes. Now it's all part of a larger Department of Health outreach effort to increase awareness about Zika to help reduce the spread of the virus in the territory. Well, we received some concerned calls regarding a road closure at Government Hill, Kangenskada. Well, it was closed due to um, begin at 9 p.m. due to uh, facilitating some maintenance in the area, and it will reopen on Friday, May 26. Drivers are asked to uh, please follow any posted detour signs during that closure. Again, it will be open on Friday, May 26. Senator Blyden responded to some concerns and community observation that was, he said, was overlooked by the Department of Public Works when planning the construction of the Turpentine Bridge. A bus stop for students traveling to and from the construction zone was unfortunately excluded, he said, when plans were developed for the new road that leads to the Turpentine Bridge. Senator Blyden met with the St. Thomas Administrator, Mr. Merwin Potter, Assistant Administrator, Mr. Leonard Finley, and the contractor. Mr. Andy Smith of Island Roads and after a brief discussion um, they discussed the problem the men quickly devised a plan to construct a safe place for the students at the NADA site the new but temporary bus stop will include a canopy to help the children uh, be protected from the elements and safe from possible vehicular harm while waiting for scheduled uh, bus pickups and drop-offs this week is National Public Works Week, and Senator Blyden extends a heartfelt appreciation to all employees of one of the most, he said, important departments of the territory. There was a demonstration conducted by the department and uh, on Monday, and many uh, attended that. The Department of Public Works, he says, is a vital component of our territory, and as chairman over the Committee on Housing, Public Works, Waste Management, and Planning, Senator Blyden said it was uh, very necessary to acknowledge the employees and the work they do on behalf of the territory. Also, Senator Brian Smith, he reported that the entire Virgin Islands community needs to acknowledge the men and women of the department for their hard work and dedication despite their limited resources available to do their jobs on a daily basis. The department have tried to keep the streets maintained throughout the VI. The senator reported that he watched a demonstration, again, that was held, which was conducted by the department's heavy equipment operators at the Fort Christian parking lot. Virgin Islands Public Works Week is an honorable moment and all in the territory need to um, honor and recognize. Well, in an effort to further promote the customer-centric model at the Customer Experience Center, VIA has extended its operational hours on May 1st, 2017. And if you're not aware of it, VIA, VIA's Customer Experience Centers at Tutu Park Mall in St. Thomas and Estate Diamond in St. Croix 
now open from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. Monday through Friday and on Saturdays 8 to 5. At the St. John office located at the Marketplace, operational hours are Monday to Friday, 8.30 a.m. to 4. At the Customer Experience Center via subscribers can obtain information on the products and services, make changes to their accounts, and address other operational matters. Customers may call the customer care at 340-777 via and effective immediately cashiers are now available Monday to Saturday from 8 a.m. to 3 at the Tutu Park and Estate Diamond Customer Experience Centers. VIA welcomes cash payments at the centers and takes this opportunity to remind customers of the additional eight payment options that are available. Pay by phone, which you can call 774-2PAY, which is 2729, 24 hours a day. Pay online. You can use your computer, tablet, or cell phone to set up an account and pay your bills online 24 hours a day. www.via.vi. Pay at the bank at any Banco Popular, First Bank, Scotia Bank, or Bank of St. Croix branches in the territory. United Way is a global organization that focuses on identifying and resolving community issues in collaboration with financial institutions, government agencies, and local school. Now, the local chapter of the United Way, they will be hosting a chili cook-off this Sunday, May 28th at the DV Carina Bay Resort from 12 to 7 p.m. Vino Dadlani spoke with News 2. Here's more. The United Way will be holding its Spicy in Paradise Chili Cook-Off on May 28th, 2017 at the DV Carina Bay Resort. The event is actually a fundraiser to help support programs here in the territory. What's very important is it'll help us with our after-school programs, our pediatric telemedicine program, as well as our job training and early youth intervention programs. What I'm happy to share is that all proceeds will stay in the territory and support the community as a whole. What's great about today or the upcoming event will be that we're actually having great entertainment. We have Kurt Schindler coming in and giving us some time, the reggae band Fire Train. We also have Kevin Williams, a young artist, uh, from the complex, as well as many different assorted cooks who are dedicating their time and their expertise to make this event a event of delight and taste buds and flavor. Thanks for that, Vinod. Wonderful organization there. Now, we are so proud of him. You may know him as singer and songwriter of Caribbean rock calypso, pioneers from West Lindy in the VI, but John Ghazi is also an accomplished world-class surfer who's currently participating in the 2017 ISA World Surfing Games in France which is known for its beautiful beaches on the Atlantic coast. 47 countries are participating in this world-class event. John held the Virgin Islands flag proudly during the opening ceremonies and has competed fiercely with surfers from around the world. Be sure to tune in to News 2. I will catch up with John and get some words from him and find out how the competition is going. Stick around. We have much more straight ahead. We'll be right back. couple of days. It's been very dry, pleasant temperatures, and the ocean has just been right about perfect for many people. But uh, the weather is changing a little. We do have a little series of storms moving through. I shouldn't say storms, just some very brief showers that are moving into the island today that will continue for tonight. So uh, tonight we'll have a couple brief showers. They'll come. We'll have a couple little downpours and then they'll be gone. So for the rest of the night, it's going to be partly cloudy. 77 degrees for the overnight low and tomorrow well more people will see showers than today and again there's just brief showers that will come and go st john 86 degrees for the high temperature st thomas 86 as well and st croix 87 and pretty much anyone could see uh, some of those showers so i guess grab an umbrella if you're worried about getting stuck outside underneath one of those rain clouds it's also going to be a bit cloudier uh, too than it was today so 
waves in the Atlantic side, three to five feet. Winds out of the east, 10 to 15 knots, so not bad, pretty calm. And the Caribbean side is very similar to the Atlantic. We're seeing waves at two to four feet here, so just a bit calmer. Winds still out of the east from 10 to 15 knots. So if you're going to be on a boat or out maybe snorkeling, the ocean should cooperate for you. Should be pretty good time. Taking a look at our extended forecast, well, Saturday, a shower in places, certainly not a washout. It's mostly going to be a beautiful day for our holiday weekend. Sunday, similar story, a shower in places, temperatures at 85 degrees. On Memorial Day, just head to the beach, why not? It's going to be a beautiful day, just a shower in spots. They'll be very brief, uh, and then it's going to be gorgeous. And then on Tuesday, we could see a few more showers on our Tuesday, uh, 86 degrees for the high temperature. Sandy, back to you. Thank you for that. Devante Samuel of Ricardo Richards Elementary School shares tonight's weather picture, and we can see you included some sunshine. Devante, thank you for that. We are nearing the weekend. Many people are hoping for that for the Memorial Day parades. Send us your news to weather picture to the address on the screen. Be sure to tune in. Give us all the information we need, your name, age, school, and brief description, and tune in to see it right here on News 2. That is all for now. Thank you for joining us for all the latest. I'm Sandra Guman Singh. We will see you next time.